what's up guys it's Erica welcome back to my channel if you're new here um, I do videos about pretty much anything at this point like I've been doing fashion hauls I like um, I'm huge into like fitness and nutrition I do a lot um, but the purpose of this video is because I wanted to talk about my new puppy that I got here he is his name is Chewy he's not looking because he's like he is really he's a lot um, let me show you guys him and then I'm gonna let him wander around say hi Chewy say hi Chewy so he is about three months old and he is a um, he's a Yorkie and a Maltese mix so he's called a Morky um, he's three months old like I said um, I got him from a place not too far from my house um, and that place they do they deal with a lot of breeders so that is him this is chewy he does not have a haircut because he's so young like i want to get him a haircut but he can't get one yet because he's so young um they told me like i have to wait he does not have all his shots just yet he's almost done he has like one more left to get um i have my phone here because i have a bunch of stuff i want to go through for people who might be thinking of getting a puppy especially a small breed like him he's only um going to get about to be like eight pounds both of his parents i want to show like show you how cute he is look at this look at his face look at how cute he is hi chewy hi chewy um but i'm gonna put him down so that i can talk to you guys about you know buying a puppy especially a small breed puppy um his parents like i said they're they were both about eight pounds i think the dad was a yorkie and the mom was a maltese um, so he's going to probably be projected to get about eight pounds as well. Hopefully he'll get a little bit bigger. I, I guess I'll start with all the things that I got for him starting off, um, and all the things you might want to consider getting if you are getting a puppy. Sorry guys, I want to adjust the camera. So all the things I got for him and all the things that I would probably suggest you get as well. Um, I'll start with that and then I'll talk about kind of the pros and the cons. To having a small breed puppy and some of the things to watch out for because you do have to watch out for certain things with smaller puppies like him he's probably about 2.5 pounds right now hold on one second yeah he's probably about 2.5 pounds the last time we went to the vet um we he was about 2.5 pounds so let's go ahead and get into the video because i know a lot of people don't like to watch people ramble right away so i'm going to talk about all the stuff that you should get and all the stuff that i got um and i'll show you kind of some examples as well so I got him chew toys. You want to get a puppy of any kind, a variety of chew toys. So for instance, I got him stuff like this with different textures so that he can chew. I got him some cloth ones. So my mom got him like this. It's like a squeak toy, um, like a cloth chew toy. They are going to chew and they're gonna chew on all of your stuff if you don't get them chew toys and even after you get them chew toys they'll still chew on you know items that you probably that he, they should not be chewing on so um i'm sorry i'm moving stuff out of his way because he's chewing on stuff as i speak so um yeah so that's one of the things i, I would suggest highly getting chew toys i got him a snuggle puppy so i'm gonna show you because for some reason like when i bought it from amazon they gave me two I don't know why I got two. I might have paid for two and didn't know, but this is what the snuggle puppy looks like. And it's supposed to mimic when they're with their brothers and sisters and they're like sleeping all together. Um, it comes with like a heating pad. So you put it inside of the snuggle puppy. It comes with this thing right here, which is like a heartbeat. It mimics a heartbeat. You put it in. So like if you're leaving and you need to, you know, go and you want to train your puppy to be able to be by themselves and in comfort um you want to be able to you know get them acclimated to being by themselves hold on one second yeah so you want to get them acclimated to be able to um be by themselves for the most part because you can't be with them 24 7 so that's a good way of getting them acclimated to you know being in their crate by themselves so i have found that that is a huge help because when we first got them we didn't have the snuggle puppy and he was freaking out when I first put him in his cage or his crate by himself. 
he was freaking out um he was trying to get out and this particular breed also too if you want to know about morkies this particular breed they're very prone to separation anxiety so you want to break them out of that habit as early as possible um the next thing i got him because this breed and i have like all his stuff in this little thing that I got from Target. I have all his stuff and that's helpful too so that way you don't you're not no like you're not sure where all his stuff is at. But I got him a brush. I got him a comb too. This is supposed to like when you comb through them, you're supposed to be able to see like if they got any type of like fleas or something on them from being outside. Um so I got him a brush and a comb. This video might be long, sorry, because I have a lot to cover. I got him so when I left the place where i got him from so and i'll lead and this this will lead me into some of the cons um and the issues that you might have with the small breed dog um but we got him this uh nutrition gel and they actually gave this to me where I, when i purchased him i might have to like put him away for a minute so i can talk to you guys all right so i'm sorry i had to put him away because like i said he's a puppy and he's a lot oh let me let me get my let me catch my breath let me see where I was at. Oh, so I got him this. Um, they so they sent this home with him because he has a tendency to be hypoglycemic if he doesn't have enough to eat because he's a small breed puppy. Something you want to look out for, and especially because he's so young um, and he's not quite three pounds yet. So that's something you want to look out for. I'll go more into detail on that, but that's one thing that I have to make sure that I have just in case he has an episode and this will bring him out of it quickly um the next thing you want to get them is a crate that's probably i'm probably going out of order but here's this crate <laughs> here's this crate with this snuggle puppy inside um and i also have a water bottle in there as well so you want to get him a crate especially if you're planning on crate training I'm definitely crate training because you want to train them not that it's not okay to pee in the house and that's the way to do it because you contain them to a small space. Most dogs do not want to pee or poop where they lay so it trains them that when they come out they go to the bathroom and then you should not have any incidents. You probably still will have little accidents here and there but you shouldn't overall like if they should know that I only go in a certain spot and that's the whole purpose of crate training so he's definitely getting crate chained and I and it also he's comfortable there that's where he sleeps at night um if I need to put him away he goes in his crate sometimes he whines but um other times he'll just go in there especially if he's tired you want to tire him out um they'll go in there and they'll just go to sleep so that's the whole purpose of that you want to get puppy pee pads but this is basically what they look like it kind of think of it like a diaper for dogs so if they have accidents in the house, you want to train them that they can go on the pee pad. Um, I personally got a grass pad, so I'll talk about that real quick. So I got a fake grass pad and I put the puppy pad underneath it. And that's how I've been training him to go to the bathroom. He caught on like within two days. Um, so now he goes to the bathroom um, on the grass pad. And I always have like the puppy pad underneath so that way I'm not constantly washing the um the pad that it came with i'm not constantly washing that so that's how he goes to the bathroom currently um, i know some people just do straight puppy pads but i've trained him to do fake grass because eventually i want him to go outside and i'll get i'll talk about more talk more about why he's not outside shortly um you i got him a car seat so amazon you could get everything from this thing is huge and i didn't know it was this big but this is a car seat it's like a booster seat rather and it's by this company Lesher or leisure um so and it also like you can like it's like a bag too like it's weird but these are the straps so you strap him you strap these onto like the car like the um the seat strap these onto the seat and then it also has this thing so you strap this onto their harness and it keep it, it's comfortable it's like a little bit it keeps them safe and comfortable in the car when you're driving um and the reason i got that is because and uh, honestly a lot of the stuff i got as i went because i wasn't sure that i needed it <clears throat> so i got that because i've been transporting him back and forth to the vet and i was transferring him in his crate and that's too much for me to constantly be taking 
his crate is too big and it's too much for me to be taking back and forth with him. He's too little to sit in my seat himself because he'll just be sliding all over the place and he always wants to like get on my lap. So I just figure I need to get him a car seat. So that can be strapped into the car and you can take them back and forth safely. Um, I got him a puppy playpen. So this is a puppy playpen. And uh, you guys don't need all of this stuff. But basically it just it opens up like this. And it's kind of like an alternative to the crate. So like if he's sick of being in this crate. And he doesn't love this thing. I'm going to be honest with you. He doesn't love it. But um, if he's sick of being in his crate. And the reason I have this is because I have a cat. And I'm still trying to... Um, socialize them to the point where like my cat's not freaking out but I have that because if he's not if he's not in his crate it's bigger he can play in it um, I put his bed in it which I'll show you his bed in a minute I put his bed I put his toys and he can play in there and you know it'll give him a little bit of a break from being in his crate but if I need him like to be secure and not running around I can put him in there too and just have him sit in there for a little bit um I got him some puppy scissors as well so I got these they have like this little rounded edge so that way like when you're cutting around the eyes they're not pointy I don't know if you can see that one thing about Canon they are never gonna focus anyway it has like a little rounded edge there so if you're cutting around their face you don't like accidentally poke them in the eye he needs that because um, when I give him a bath he has like all this hair growing and I can't get him groomed yet because he doesn't have all his shots yet and they um, when I went to the grooming place they told me that he could not get groomed this early what they do is they'll like just give him a bath and they'll like trim up their face and I'm like well I could do that so I've been just bathing him like that's another thing you want to get him some puppy shampoo I got him um, the Burt's Bees puppy shampoo um, I'll show you I'll maybe show I'll link it in the description everything that I get to everything that I got I'll link it in the description just in case you're getting a puppy and you need to know where to find all of these things I'll put it in the description box um, <clears throat> but yeah I got him some scissors and I got him some shampoo so that I can just cut the the hair that grows around his eyes because it'd be like in his eyes it'd be like sitting on his eyeballs and I feel so bad so I just like try to cut it out um, every time I give him a bath and I have been giving him a bath like once a week if y'all are wondering um, then like I said I got him the grass pad I got a lot of the stuff I got between Petco, PetSmart and Amazon those are like the three stores that I went to for all of this stuff like I said I'll link everything that I can find in the description box below but yeah I got him um, a grass pad that was the fake grass to teach him and to show him how to use the potty and hopefully transition him to outside grass. Um, I didn't want to do the puppy pads because like I said, I do eventually want him to be outside. So I got him um, the grass pad. I got him a puppy collar. I got him a puppy collar and I got this from Amazon and it has a bow tie, but he can't fit it yet because um, he's too small. His neck is too small. So, and it's kind of heavy too, but it's super cute. Got a little bow tie. Um, and then I have his name engraved in my phone number underneath so that if he ever got lost, somebody, um, can, you know, know where to find me to get, hopefully give me my dog back. Um, and then I also, I got him microchip too. So like they can scan it and know that he's registered to me. Um, I got him, I got a camera. Well, I've had this camera. This is also from Amazon, but I got this camera so that when I'm not home, I can see him in his crate and I just usually put it right next to his crate and the camera goes up and down you can adjust it through your on your phone like you can move it up down across so I watch him on this if I it's, it's almost like you know you have um you have the kid like literally he's like a he's kind of like a child um not totally <coughs> but kind of so I got him a little camera just so I can make sure like he's okay when I'm away um and that I don't need to like rush back home from for something then I got him a water bottle for his crate so like one of them let me show you so this thing so like if when he's in his crate he can just drink his water um I used like a little blanket that I already had and put that in the crate got him dog bowls 
I just got him some basic dog bowls from Amazon, like nothing too special. These were like probably like the set, the set was like probably like nine or ten dollars. Um, I got him a harness and a leash. So here's his harness and this, this doesn't totally fit him because he's so small and the leash to go with it. Um, got this from Pet Co, I believe. Then I got him the Kong. So this is what the Kong looks like and you can put peanut butter inside it. So you put peanut butter inside and it, it keeps them busy. So like if he's, if I'm away, he can use this and he can just, you know, have something to play with and a nice little treat as well. So I got him a Kong and I got him a bed, which here's his bed right here. Got this from Petco, Petco. So just a simple, small little bed. Um, that he can kind of chill in inside of his playpen or outside. I'll eventually, I want him to be like outside of his playpen like during the day and like in his crate at night. I got puppy um, puppy wipes. So like if he's outside, because I have been trying to, adjust to, to take him outside a little bit so he can get familiar. So if he's outside or if he like poops and he stepped in it or because he has been, he has stepped in his poop before, you can wipe his paws. Um, sometimes like if I don't, if he like, I, like I told you, I wipe, I'll give him a bath like once a week. So between his baths, I just wipe them down with the puppy pads. They smell like ch cherry. They smell really good. He seems to not, he don't seem to mind it. Um, and then I got him some treats and he's like, the, he likes these treats. Um, and I'm using these to train him. So currently he knows how to sit. He knows how to stay. I'm trying to teach him to give me his paw, trying to teach him like roll over. I'm trying to teach him some other tricks, but right now he knows how to sit and stay. The basic. And then I got him too. I'm sorry, one more thing. I got him this little, it's kind of like you just put it over your yourself and you can put him inside. He's too small for it, so he's not using that yet. So hopefully he'll be able to grow into it. So now that I've talked about all the things that I got him um, to start off, you know, with having him and having him be comfortable. I am going to talk about some of the things that come with small dogs that I didn't realize. So hypoglycemia is a big one for a small dog breed. So the first night when we brought him home, he was really sick. And I didn't realize how sick he was until like recently because I was like, dang, he's doing so much better. But we brought him home. And with small dogs, they, I guess, don't know how to regulate their blood sugar or they, they because they're so small, their blood sugar is kind of like all over the place. That's why I have these because if he has like an attack, um, you give this to him, you kind of rub it on his gums and he comes back. So um, kind of like you treat him like a diabetic almost. But the first night we had him, we I noticed like he was in his crate and he was super quiet and I took him out and he was like really limp and he was having a hypoglycemic episode and what happens is they their bodies become limp they kind of fall over and they like kind of like not unconscious but they're very like unaware so we like noticed that the first day we had him and it was kind of like scary so but I remember um but the pets the, the place that we got him from they informed us about this so we kind of knew what to do and the first couple days that we got him he wasn't eating and i think he wasn't eating because he was like super weak but as a puppy he was still running around and exerting more energy because he has he's a puppy he just wants to play he doesn't understand what's going on we had to like i had to almost force feed them because the food that they sent us home with they were like hard it was hard food and I went out to the store and got him some softer food because I feel like the hard food was kind of harder for him to eat. So I got him some soft food like really quickly. Went to the grocery store got him some pedigree. That's not what I planned on feeding him but I wanted him to eat something. Um, so I got him some pedigree and I gave him this, um, this vitamin supplement and he came back. And ever since then I was making sure he ate like four times a day because I didn't want him to have that those hypoglycemic episodes. And since then... He's been doing really well. He hasn't had one. So that is something to look out for, especially if you're getting a smaller dog that's going to be less than two pounds. So as, and as he gets older and as he grows and gets a little bit more weight on him, supposedly they're supposed to grow out of it. But even if they don't, 
you still just have to be mindful of those signs having a smaller dog that's something i didn't realize i didn't like they told me but i didn't realize it was going to be like that severe because the dog can die like if it goes into um like an episode and it's like it's been the dog's been there for a while like the dog can like it could be fatal so you just gotta keep that in mind when they're puppies like that you cannot walk them outside um that young and so they have all of their shots because there's this thing called parvo um that they can get so you just want to be mindful that they're fully protected before they can actually go out for walks so that's the reason why we've been training him on grass and not taking him outside because he's not fully vaccinated yet i think he has like one more shot before he becomes fully vaccinated and not only does that include going outside but that includes like dog parks that includes like puppy um daycare that includes any type of social uh socialization with other dogs because they're at risk of getting um that thing called parvo and some other things that you don't want them to get when they're that young so you want to keep them inside so he's been inside a lot because of that and like i said most recently we've been kind of taking him outside to start getting acclimated with being outside um the fake the fake grass training he took to like i said like within two days um he did have some accidents and i think when you bring a puppy home you're going to have they're going to have accidents so if you want put them in a spot where there's no carpet just understand they're going to have accidents because you have to teach them where you want them to go to the bathroom so he did have a few accidents but every time he had an accident i picked him up and i put him on the grass pad and i said potty or i said no or i, I caught him mid in the middle of him going to the bathroom and i put him on this potty it took a couple times for him to catch on but he eventually caught on so now i don't really have too many accidents out of him he usually just goes over to the um the grass pad and then they have this spray stuff that you can spray they have that at petco or pet smart and you spray it on the grass pad so it gives them like this pheromone and it makes them feel like oh okay this is where i'm supposed to go so i sprayed that on the grass pad too when i got it and it helped him i believe um know that that's where he had to go to the bathroom and like i said i haven't had any problems and i've had him for a month now um biting um you want to break your puppy out of this so they're puppies they're they're gonna bite and chew on everything like i said so what i've been doing is instead of like like screaming and hollering at him i have been like every time he bites me or bites something that i don't want him to bite i just replace it with a toy a chew toy that's why i said you're gonna want to make sure you have a lot of toys different textures um different sizes so that they can chew because that's what they're doing because they're teething so they just it feels good to them for them to chew so that's one of the things that i haven't been encountering is just kind of trying to keep replacing um <coughs> whatever he's chewing on or biting on with a toy um they're going to keep you up at night at least my dog has been keeping me up at night like if you don't want a new schedule don't get a puppy because i i didn't realize how early he was gonna wake up and i'm trying to get him acclimated to a schedule and i think he's starting to catch on so what i do is before i go to bed i like give myself a half an hour to let him run around and play because you want your puppy to be tired when they go into their crate so they can go to sleep if he's not tired or if he's like wired he's not going to sleep and he's going to cry so i make sure that after he eats he has some running around time because i also want him to get um the energy out but i also want him to go to the bathroom i want him to poop and pee um so i i feed him like closer to like i might feed him like around eight or nine um because i go to bed like pretty early but i'll feed him i'll feed him later on in the evening and then i'll let him run around for like a half hour 45 minutes and during that time he usually pee, pees and he poops and he has time to run around get his zoomies out and then by the end of that he's usually tired and then i can put him in his crate now since i've had him for a month he's starting to sleep throughout the night the first couple nights he had me up every like two hours i'm not gonna lie every two hours so what i do is i'll put him in his crate i'll like now that i know like kind of how he is and you'll start to like get to know your puppy um i know that he wants to play he plays around he'll, he'll run around i let him do all of that closer to bedtime i put him in his crate he now has like i said started to sleep through the night but he will wake up sometimes like four o'clock in the morning and when i wake him and when he wakes up i make sure that i don't let him out of his crate until he's completely quiet because that's another thing you don't want your puppy to start to think that 
that screaming and that whining is going to get them attention. So I don't I don't let him out of his crate at all until he's completely quiet. When he's quiet, I let him out and I take him straight over to his potty pad or the fake grass and I tell him to go potty. If he if he, usually he goes potty, if he doesn't go potty, I put him right back in his crate. If he whines again, I do the same thing. I wait till he's quiet, I take him out, I take him straight to his potty. Most of the time within that time, he'll either pee or poop or, or do both. And then once he does that, I put him right back in his crate and he goes to sleep. You don't want to give them any to any attention. You don't want to think want them to think that it's time to play. You want them to know that the only way you're getting let out of this crate at night, in the middle of the night, is if you have to go to the bathroom. If you don't have to go to the bathroom, you go back in your crate and you finish the night and you go to sleep. So he's starting to catch on. We've, I've been doing that with him for like the, like the whole time that I've that he's been with me. So I think he's starting to catch on to that. Um, but he's still like like for instance today, he slept through the night. And he's, he wakes up like every morning like at 6 to 6.30. So I've just like, I've just come to the fact, come to the realization that I'm just going to be waking up around 6.30 every morning. Um, so what I do is like when, when I officially am like, okay, it's okay for you to wake up. I, I let him, I let him out his crate again when he's completely quiet and I make sure he eats. So I'll give him his food and his water. I've been, like I said, I've been feeding him like four times a day just because he, I don't want him to have like any hypoglycemia um, episodes. So I let him out of his crate in the morning, let him, let him eat, let him run around again so he can be tired. And by the time it's time for me to like go to work, he goes back into his crate and I let him sleep in his crate until about 12 o'clock. Um, <coughs> he's usually good. Again, the best, the best time to put a puppy in a crate is when they're tired. So you have to tire them out and it is a little bit of a sacrifice because you're probably going to be waking up but you want to tire them out so that they'll go in their crate and they'll just go to sleep so that's not that's the little morning routine that i have um i wanted to say too another thing that i've experienced with him is he has been having some difficulty when he gets his shot so the last time he got his shot I, like I said, I was getting him to a point where he could, he was eating totally fine, no problem. After he got his shots, he was, he would have like, he has pain. So like the last time he got his shot, he had like his rabies shot up here. And then he had like his other distemper like on his back hind lane, on his back hind legs. And he, um, he didn't really, um, he doesn't really adjust well to his shots, I'm not going to lie. So he was like yelping in pain like when I would touch him. And I had to take him back to the vet and he was swollen. So apparently this is something that he's been dealing with. And I think it's because he's so small. And when they give him the shot, they just don't, he just doesn't, doesn't take well to it. So that's another thing to think about. And also when I notice when he gets his shots, his appetite decreases. So I kind of have to like make him eat um, in order for him to um, get his nourishment so another thing with small dogs sometimes you gotta really make them eat because they sometimes don't have appetites or and they'll run around and run around and run around and they need to you know make sure that they eat and then the other thing i want to say is to merging him with my my cat has been difficulty i uh, mean has been difficult not because of him but because of my cat like the my cat is very territorial and she's very like, she's just a different kind of cat. Meanwhile, I took him to my mom's house and she had the cat and the cat's totally fine. My cat, so if you're like merging two animals together, um, be patient because it's been a little bit difficult. So what I have had to do was keep them separate. And that's why I said like I have the playpen and I have all that stuff because if I have him like in the general area where the cat is, I have to keep them separate because I don't know what my cat's going to do because she's been hissing at him. Um, if you guys have any suggestions on like how to commingle them, let me know. I've been doing the, the typical, you know, let them smell each other, keep them separated, let them look at each other, um, bring them in on a leash. So I've been doing all of that and she is still kind of just like, I don't want anything to do with them. I'm, I'm hoping that they get to a point where even if she doesn't like him, that they can just coexist and like ignore each other. He doesn't have any problem because the place where I got him from, they had cats there, so he's used to seeing cats. He doesn't like run after the cat or anything. He just, he kind of just looks at her. Um, he's not very interested at, at uh, he's not very interested in my cat. She's more interested in him. 
So, um, yeah, and then like a lot of the pros to having a puppy is they bring you just so much joy. Like he is so sweet. He is just the sweetest dog. Um, I really enjoy having him. He has just made my 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 day brighter. Like if I'm having a bad week, he's just so full of energy. Um, I am hoping for him to get out of the puppy stage so that he can get to the point where like he's manage more manageable because he does require a lot. So if you are in a situation where you're like, I don't have time for this, then it might not be good to get a puppy because they are going to take a lot of your time. They're going to rob you of your sleep and they are going to like, and especially if you have other animals to care for, like you're going to probably be spending most of your time with the puppy just in order to get them acclimated and help them to be able to grow, get the proper nutrients, be able to play, socialize them, all of that stuff. So my goals um, for the next couple of months is for him to get spayed or neutered. I think it's neutered for the dogs. So I'm going to get him neutered um, once he's five months. Currently he's three months. The, the vet said he can get neutered at five to six months. So I'm going to get him um, neutered at five months. And then um, I am also going to start, like I walked him today outside. He didn't go to the bathroom outside because I think he's still like used to going on a grass pad. So I might eventually take the grass pad, put it outside in the grass so he knows like I want you to go outside. Um, so that's the next thing I'm going to be working on with him. I'm probably going to teach him some other commands. And then I want to socialize him with other dogs like once he has all his shots and he's able to um, be around other dogs. So those are like my next couple goals and because I want him to be like a well-versed um, well-behaved dog um, and I think that's what you really want when you get a puppy uh, you want them to grow into a, a decent dog like you don't want them to be like have separation anxiety you don't want them to be scared of people you want them to be able to you know mesh with other dogs mesh with people and yeah but overall having a puppy has been great I think it, his, it does have its challenges but I really have been enjoying my puppy um, I hope that you guys found this video helpful. Um, I will try to link everything that I talked about in the description box below. If you have any questions, definitely comment down below and ask me. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. That's going to be the end of this video, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.